move on, Keith, and talk about Tottenham Hotspur because Daniel Levy's faced criticism for the Tottenham adult shirt price is at £85 for the replica. What are your thoughts on that piece of news and that pricing as well? Well, the way that will work is that um, there'll be a fee agreed between the kit manufacturer and the club uh, that will be an advance payment or a payment every year. And that will be, you know, you've seen these deals for kit deals that have been mentioned. We've mentioned it before with Liverpool and we've mentioned it with with other clubs. So there's a big headline number. And then that, you know, the kit manufacturer, of course, wants to make up that number in revenue in some way. And so there'll be a discussion between the club who also wants that high net level of, of revenue on the contract and the kit manufacturer to say, OK, what is the retail price going to be? Uh, now, of course, the greed from both sides will want it to be as high as possible. But they'll also know that there is a real risk of, you know, putting off the fans and feeling ripped off, etc., which seems to be a headline that comes every year at this time of year. Everybody complains about the uh, the kits, and I've been through it all myself. I understand it. Uh, but we've also got a job to maximise the revenue uh, to, to, you know, for the club and to try and make sure the manager has resources available to buy players. So it's the whole magic circle that goes on. Uh, it will be, you know, £85. We're getting towards the £100 kit very soon, it looks like, as well. Uh, and that's going to be difficult. The argument was always in my time, well, look, you know, this is the shirt that uh, the kids that will buy it, they wear it literally all the time. And so you get more use out of uh, this than any other piece of clothing that you'll ever see the kids wear. So in terms of what it may have been expensive, in terms of value for money, it certainly is very good and, and great value for money, provided the kits stay together and they don't uh, rip and melt away, uh, which has happened in, in some cases before. Uh, but overall, look, it's it's a difficult uh, conversation because, as, as I say, the kit manufacturer wants to pay the club as much as possible to get the, get the deal done. The club wants as much as possible from the kit manufacturer so they can have that proud headline of, look, you know, kit, kit deal negotiated 30% higher than last year, etc. Uh, but who's going to pay for it in the end? It's the consumer. And so we've got to be sure that there is at least attention to this, that perhaps buying a kit and getting some extras as well besides it could be the way forward, but there's a limited number of assets you can give away. Uh, and so it's a difficult thing, but uh, it's going to be passed on to the consumer, unfortunately. And £85, as I say, we're heading towards that first £100 kit. Keith, well, they have sort of mapped out a price increase year on year? Well, they have got a chart effectively showing when they're likely to increase. So will it be a decision they take yearly to see what the reaction was for the previous season? How will that have worked with their decision with Nike? They'll have a pretty clear idea of what the you know, the length of the contract, what they forecast the market price increases could be. Uh, and they'll try and keep it to a, a level that um, will not be increased too much year on year. So there isn't one big major increase step. They'll try and keep it probably high at the first level because they've got the advantage of being a new kit coming in with a new manufacturer. And then from there, it may be something less than 5% each year, is I think what they'll probably be looking at. They'll understand the market. They'll they'll know what uh, who's doing what to who and where they want to be positioned. And they'll try and get some sort of uh, X factor, you know, you know, unique sales positioning about the kit itself, whether it's the fabric or some other unique design feature. Um, but they will be clear that, yes, they're, they're going to come in at a new price because they've only got one chance to uh, to come in as the new manufacturer, a new kit manufacturer again, and then go in, as I say, at less increases per year after that. That's what I found in negotiations previously. Uh, but I think it's, it's always difficult, uh, you know, whether you have a third kit as well has always been a subject of uh, debate, or whether that should be every other season. There's so many different things, and it is hard for families right now. We understand that. Uh, but football, it just seems to keep on going, and uh, that uh, revenue stream just keeps on needing to be increased and topped up every year. Could Keith, the fans boycott, or should they boycott in protest potentially? Or do you still expect fans to go out and buy the kits? And, and are, are you actually expecting even still of that £100 kit to be seen very soon? I think we're going to see it probably next next season. Um I think there's going to be something that will come out special around that sort of time. It will be a hundred pound kit. So I think it's, it's very imminent, certainly. Um, but in terms of uh, the fans boycotting, it's been talked about and tried before. It never seems to work. Um, you know, listen, if you, if you're still a young kid, you want your, your, your shirt, uh, that's it. Uh, and I understand it. It's that's the attraction of football. They see their stars on the TV and they want to go and see it and they want to get it and they want to wear it. 
They've seen the fans, the culture for many years now in replica shirts. It seems to be a uniquely British thing to a great degree. Uh, but no, I think that won't stop. And I don't think, uh, I think fans look, everybody moans and grumbles. The same as, you know, the price of beer at the game has gone up or the price of a pie. Everything is going up in life everywhere. Uh, and unfortunately, the fans understand that. And football tends to be the passion that they will allow inflation to creep into uh, because they're so hooked to their club support. And keep looking on field. Hume Min Son's contract is, is expiring next summer. Do you expect the club to extend with him? And, and in today's market, what do you think his valuation would be going into the summer transfer window? Yeah, that's a difficult one. Um, I, I do think they will increase his contract, but I don't think it'll be a big increase. And in terms of his valuation right now, you've got to put him in the 100 million range at present, even still, uh, you know, despite having a pretty poor season last season. I think hopefully he'll come back refreshed, uh, ready for a, a proper season. I think now he understands Ange a bit further and uh, what Ange wants from him. Hopefully they can try, try and build the squad and formation around him a little bit more than they did last year. Certainly, as we know, Spurs want to be free scoring. That certainly seems to be the message from Poster Coglu is that they want to go and attack. And he will become a crucial part of that. You know, if he's fit, he's certainly in the 100 million mark. I suppose the option would be Saudi. Uh, that's the other one that could be looking at there for him. And Spurs will know that. Uh, I know he would command a very good price in Saudi for lots of reasons. And, uh, you know, the trade issues with Korea, etc., cetera, with Saudi would, would also play a big part in that. And there have been some big, big trade contracts signed with Korea recently. So that's why, you know, there's often things happening behind the scenes that may mean more than actually just normal football reasons. So these things have to be paid attention to. And I think that's the one area. But I still think Spurs will land him again for another maybe two-year contract. Um, but I think, you know, age, injury, et cetera, I'd put him at 100 million plus mark. And picking up on that, Keith, there, we know that Tottenham have made contact with the representatives of Lille, Lille's talisman, Jonathan David, going into the summer window. What are your thoughts for them specifically scoring goals, as you've kind of discussed? Is there priority signing for Postacoglu and number nine next season? Without doubt, uh, that just seems, for me, that's what he seems focused on. And quite rightly, I mean, you've got to put the ball in the net. And I think that Ange is really building the whole squad to do that. So, yes, um, I think that is going to be their focus. Uh, I think probably more than most clubs, Postacoglu is going to focus on that scoring capability. I want to, I think he wants a few options rather than just the uh, you know one or two. And I think he's going to come out with a very exciting squad for next year. Uh, I wish him luck because it's a refreshing attitude to have. And I know the Spurs fans seem to enjoy most of it from certainly when it was moving at the start of the season and, and through the, halfway through the season as well. The end didn't come quite as good. Uh, but still, I think they're excited that he could produce a very attacking team. And there's no doubt that's what I think he's obsessing about, his attacking options all the time. And he wants to be that free-scoring team.